right, we got to talk about Dabo Sweeney and Tanya Harden right quick because there's some things we got to talk about with race. Race, I said. We doing it right now, all right? It's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kid folks? It's RJ Young. I'm not on a step mail. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we got to talk about Dabo Sweeney as Tanya Harding. And I have to unpack some things for a, a group of people that are really difficult to reach, and we can understand why. So, let's start with Dabo Sweeney before we get to Tanya Harding on this thing and tie it all up together because, whoo, boy, we got some stuff to unpack. So, Dabo Sweeney holds a press conference today where, among other things, we learned that Justin Ross is hurt and going to miss the season. And while that would normally be a dominant story in college football to drive the news cycle, <laughs> we kind of seen 140 protests around the country, many in response to George Floyd's death at the hands of a police officer for the very thing that Colin Kaepernick was kneeling for. George Floyd <laughs> died because the man kneeled on his neck and killed him. Asphyxiation, according to the autopsy. So Dabo wanted to hold a press conference because he doesn't do social media and Twitter and what he came up with was this statement. What I know is I approach everything from a perspective of faith and that that's where there's people, there's going to be racism and greed and hate because we live in a sinful fallen world. We have so much bad news, but really today I want to take a moment and offer some good news. Good news for who? And for me, the good news is we have a Lord that loves us all and it has conquered all already and we have a choice as to how we think how we love how we respond and how we forgive there's no question these are challenging times but what i've learned is where there is no challenge there is no change we have to all accept the challenge and bring about positive change and growth and as i talked to our staff this morning the soil is fertile and the seeds of this soil of change are love, our respect, our, our attitude, kindness, humility, service, faith, and forgiveness. And forgiveness is always the hardest. Forgiveness is something I've struggled with my, in my life, in my teens and early 20s. And eventually, I was the one being hurt because that forgiveness just eats at you. But I love respect, but love, respect, attitude, kindness, humility, service, and forgiveness these are all choices we control, and there are three truths right now for sure for this time. Love doesn't see color. Hate does. Hatred has no heart. Love does. And as, a foot, as football teams and just people in general, we have to stick together, have respect for each other, and accept the differences that do exist. So that's Dabo Sweeney, who I understand how he could miss the point. How he can miss the point of the protest and how he could talk about forgiving folks at a time when we are, for the most part, scared and enraged and we protest because nobody's ready to actually forgive anybody until you acknowledge what was wrong and go about fixing it. But more than that, this speaks to a mythology around Dabo Sweeney that I totally understand because I've been having discussions of race with, well, white folks for a very long time. And one of the things that is difficult to show them is that them being white is a privilege that helps get them ahead in life in the way that it does not help for me, a black man. Now, I understand how he could get there because Dabo Sweeney is a dude that slept with his mom in the same bed during his years in college and didn't have a lot of physical talents and still played wide receiver for Bama. And turn his meager beginnings into a multi-million dollar head coaching gig. And he can't understand how his being white helped him along the way. And I can't show him how there are little instances in life that lend themselves to him in a way that I can't show men that don't want to see it. That there are instances in our lives that lend us a privilege that women just don't have. So I'm turning to Howard Bryant and his criticism of I, Tanya, the Tanya Harding movie with Margot Robbie in it, and it's in his book, which is called Full Dissidence, and I really love it, right? So let's start with this. Hollywood was convinced that Tanya Harding's 
chain-smoking pugnacity would reach audiences, and it was in these early moments of I, Tanya that I watched the construction of her biographical sketch. Poverty, framed as adversity to overcome obstacle forged into motivation, even virtue, and I could not help but feel embittered by the care taken with white poverty. When poor Tanya feels inadequate because the snooty skating girls wear fur coats to the rink, her not yet deadbeat dad hunts some rabbit for a makeshift rancid fur coat for his little angel. Poverty requires resourcefulness. There was pride in there being white trash, and the audience, one could see, grew to like and respect the spunky warrior from the other side of the tracks with her blonde ponytail and blue eyes, braces, cigarettes, and empty wallet. One could feel the audience see themselves in her, in that uniquely American delusion, no handouts, no complaints. Deal with the expletive hand you were dealt. An obvious mythology considering... The statistics that show white people receiving government assistance in higher number than blacks and respect was the storytelling device rarely afforded black poverty, which is treated as hopeless, its victims comfortable with that hopelessness and utterly without resources. The watchful eye of the camera always intently focused on the dangers of the ghetto, not the dignity and fight that comes with surviving it even though Stevie Wonder gave it voice in 1973 on interversions, or excuse me, intervisions. Black pride, black dignity, no handouts, deal with the hand given you. Her clothes are old, Stevie sang, on the living for the city, but never are they dirty. Many black parents know firsthand that life isn't fair and prepare their children to face the world knowing such. Head up, no complaints. We've, with an added layer, If you do survive poverty, remember to be three times as good as the white people against whom you will soon compete. Yet black poverty on film, through wide eyes, rarely contains dignity or virtue or drive. Poverty is never humanized. It is in that spirit that Craig Gillespie depicts Tanya Harding's poverty triumphantly, sympathetically, An obstacle unfairly placed by her at her doormat, barricading her, impeding her progress, shaping her worldview, and damn it, Tanya was going to find a way. It was in that spirit that I watched the entertaining film of a conniving woman bumbling men with a darkening mood. None of the film's themes were relevatory. On screen or in media, white rehabilitation is no new phenomenon. School shooters become troubled lone wolves. Dirty basketball players are rebranded as intense. Dishonored law-breaking figure skaters are redeemed. Why did watching the same predictable tropes anew force me to question why I even entered the theater? Now, he goes on to say, I, Tanya, was ostensibly disconnected from politics, but it was released in the middle of a torrent and it was impossible to watch the themes and the characters without thinking about America unfolding outside the theater walls. A message, however unintentional, was being sent through the stories that virtue belonged to white working class, even when the protagonist was not only a disgrace, but a criminal. I, Tanya, was released 10 months after Trump's inauguration and its reassertion of America as exclusively white. And it came out just two months after Charlottesville's white supremacy rally that left Heather Heyer murdered. And Trump referring to the torch carriers who marched through town chanting Jews will not replace us as very fine people. The film appeared with America in the midst of that mood. After eight years of a black president, white values would be restored. Now, I understand how someone could really look around and not see how they've been helped along the way or how they have been put several steps ahead. But I would challenge you to continue to look for how that could be. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge me. 
acknowledge that the system is broken. All right, say for me, Deuces.